This Good Morning Northwest Morning Sprint is brought to you by Bill's Heating and Air Conditioning. It is now 6.52, time to get you ready to take on your Wednesday midweek with the Morning Sprint. Destiny Richards is live looking at the latest addition to Lake Coeur d'Alene Cruises. And meteorologist Matt Gray telling us about temperatures in the 50s heading our way soon. But we want to start with some breaking news here. Coeur d'Alene has chosen what the future of its school district will look like. They were asked to decide on two levies and both of them are failing. 51% of people voted against the supplemental levy, which needed 50% to pass. The plant facilities levy needed 55% and it's just short of that at about 54.5% right now. The supplemental levy funds school programs and pays for staff members like nurses and school resource officers. The plant facility levy funds building repairs and upgrades and would expire after five years. A convicted killer charged with attacking a stranger in downtown Spokane in January is now linked to another attack from months before that. But in the new charges, police say Graham, Andre, uh, Abandre Graham, attacked a woman in downtown Spokane in September. According to court documents, the woman was outside of her apartment on South Howard as she was leaving for work at four in the morning. She said a man approached her, asked her for a cigarette. When she refused, he, she said he demanded oral sex and then stabbed her. Police later found a video of the attack and had a description, but did not arrest anyone until January. That's when police started investigating another attack with a similar description linked that linked Graham to both crimes. The problem was DOC told us that Graham wasn't originally released from prison until October, a month after the September attack. Yesterday, DOC told us Graham had actually been released from prison in January of last year and was out free until he was arrested on domestic violence charges in November. He was released on that charge pending trial. During that time, police say he attacked the other woman in downtown Spokane in January. The Spokane man has pleaded guilty to shooting a federal agent back in 2021. According to court documents, 25-year-old Randy Holmes, a known gang member, tried to buy a gun from an undercover ATF agent at a Motel 6. At some point, Holmes got into the agent's car and pointed a gun at their head. The agent then told Holmes the gun was in the back of the car, and when Holmes ran around the back of the vehicle to get it, the agent told Holmes to drop the gun, but he instead fired at the agent. And it's a bit of a cool day in the inland northwest, at least for March. We'll be up in the mid-40s in the afternoon. A couple little sprinkles in North Idaho, but otherwise most of us will be staying dry for this Wednesday. The dry weather continues and the warm weather continues as well. We'll be up into the middle 50s by St. Patrick's Day. And this morning we've been live at Lake Coeur d'Alene Cruises talking all about the newest addition to their fleet, the Shadow. It was just recently bought by Lake Coeur d'Alene Cruises from the Kalispell Tribe. It used to be leased by Lake Coeur d'Alene for cruises, but now it is back after a long journey. Still needs a facelift though, what's called a retrofit to replace the carpets, the ceilings, and just get it ready up to the caliber of the other boats. Go to our website kxy.com for more information and to follow along on the renovation. Well, developers could soon be paying more to build homes in Spokane. City Council passed an emergency vote to increase fees for water and sewer on new homes. The plan comes with a fee waiver for families making less than $75,000. If passed in two weeks, developers would pay $6,000 in water and sewer hookups for new homes. That's about a 66% increase from what it is now. City Council plans to finalize the true cost where it'll be phased in over two years. President Biden signed an executive order aiming to increase the number of background checks to buy guns, promote more secure firearm storage, and ensure law enforcement agencies are getting the most out of a bipartisan gun control law enacted last summer. The Spokane Regional Air uh, Support Unit, which includes several local first responders agencies, made history this week by flying the first all-women law enforcement flight crew in the state. During their two-hour flight, civilian pilot Megan Fine, along with tactical flight officers Michaelia McTrick, uh, McKittrick and Crystal Bitzer, assisted patrol units looking for a missing child, a carjacking, and an assault. That is according to the Sheriff's Office. Our fast break to Houston coverage begins this week as Gonzaga begins its run to the Final Four in Houston. First stop, Denver, though, where the Zags will take on Grand Canyon. Alex Crescenti and Julian Minnison will follow the Bulldogs every step of the way starting tomorrow in Denver. And you can follow our fast break coverage on 4 News Now, KXLY Plus, and KXLY.com. Lucky as a seven. Oh, that 
that is the legendary song Dixieland Delight by Alabama. The multi-platinum selling country rock group is coming to Spokane on their Roll On North America tour. They perform at the Spokane Arena July 6th with special guest the Marshall Tucker Band. Tickets go on sale to the public Friday at 10 a.m. Good luck. Yeah, we will be back with a check of weather right after this break.